Hello, everyone, and welcome to Alto Open Day webinar. Uh, this webinar is uh, basically a discussion with the panel with the students about what is uh, what is like what is it like to study in Alco in Alto University. Uh, and the uh, audience uh, who joined us, uh, they can send the questions throughout the chat and uh, it will be answered later on in the Q&A session. Uh, it's important to mention that uh, questions about uh, applying and admission will be answered in the webinar on Friday, um, or you can send an email to admissions at alto.fi. So introducing myself and let me as I mentioned, you can send an email to admissions at alto.fi if you have any questions about admissions, or you can join the webinar on Friday. So uh, introducing myself, me, I'm Mohammed uh, El Amir. I am from Egypt, um, and uh, I study masters in uh, material science in the School of Chemical Engineering. I'm your host for today, and uh, I will let the panelists introduce themselves. So uh, Yana, you can start. Uh, hello everyone and thank you so much for joining today uh, also special thanks to those of you who might have stayed up late or um, joined early due to the time difference um, i am Ioana Fanudaki and uh, i come from greece i study in the school of engineering in uh, uh, master of building technology and uh, uh, this is my second year in this program And Hasib. Uh, my name is Hasib Latif. I am from Pakistan and uh, I am studying building technology in my master's. And uh, my minors are in structures. So thank you, everybody, to join the webinar and uh, welcome to those who may join later due to the time difference. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, so, uh, first of all, we'll start a section of questions about your studies. Uh, and to get started, I want to ask you guys, why did you choose Alto University specifically for your studies and, uh, and Finland as a country in general to study with? So, Hasib, you can start. Okay, so, got it. So, uh, actually, I didn't choose Alto University as an aim or as a purpose because I applied two to three countries, different, different situations, but... Uh, Alto gave me full fee waiver with open hands and with great offer. So I came here. So when I came here, I realized that Alto is a renowned university and a prominent institute. So I really enjoyed to be here. And uh, due to COVID, I couldn't go to classes and something, but uh, I really enjoyed. And uh, the Finland weather is very, very awesome. Maybe, uh, but uh, summer. But uh, this winter is my first winter here. So let's see what happened. But uh, everybody is welcome here. Okay, and uh, you will feel that uh, a really, really good cultural exploration and a lot of things here and maybe your adventurous life. Yeah. So the main purpose is uh, to choose Alto is the also that, uh, because uh, my minors are in structures and I also have a job experience, had a job experience back home. So this thing led me here. So, yep. So Alto is my option. Yep. Oh, Anna, you can go next. Yeah, we are uh, in the same program with Hasib. And also my background is in civil engineering. So I was uh, looking for uh, universities in Finland who offer a master in this field. And uh, in Alto, there was uh, the closest fit to what I wanted to study, like to continue my studies within uh, civil engineering. And um, specifically for Finland, uh, for me, I have come to Finland once for holidays and uh, I had uh, um, two friends here. So I had seen a little bit of uh, how the country looks like and uh, I wanted uh, a little bit of a different environment uh, than where I grew up and uh, uh, get some new experiences. So I decided to come a bit northern. Um, and also in this uh, field, I found that there are uh, some good opportunities here, and there is also research in the engineering field in Alto. So that 
uh, all these parameters made me make up my mind. Great, and indeed, uh, Aalto University is a great place to be. Uh, my second question to you guys is, what is the best part about studying in Aalto? Uh, Iona, you can go first, and then Hasib. Well, I would say that it's it's the people. It's um, like the students who we are studying with, uh, the teachers, and all the stuff that uh, we come in touch. Uh, like, unfortunately, the first year we have missed a little bit in the experience of studying in auto because of uh, COVID and uh, things being remotely, but uh, still uh, all of us try to maintain um, the social aspect, even remotely. Um, and, uh, I would say that uh, it's also uh, that the programs are quite uh, multidisciplinary, uh, so you can get um, uh, like you can study a course, but also um, get some knowledge about um, uh, some other area that maybe is not uh, directly about this subject, but related somehow, for example, in engineering, you can also learn about management or you can learn about sustainability, uh, which is also necessary nowadays with environmental problems all over the world. Uh, so yeah, I think that is an important aspect and um, everyone has been very welcoming and the teachers are like very helpful and there is um, like a good atmosphere overall. So I think that's the best part. What's your favorite part about studying in Alto? Oh, I got it. The best part of studying in Alto is the leniency and flexibility with the teaching stuff and also the study stuff that you don't need to panic a lot of and you don't need to take too much stress. You can like uh, plan your courses and everything according to your uh, ease and also according to your time schedule here. And the other thing that uh, professors and uh, studies diverse in nature like uh, you can also get a touch of different fields remaining in your minors and remaining in your with aligned with your interest you can touch you can have touch of different fields like uh, with computer science programming as i want told about environmental management things okay as i am a like i am inclined to structures but uh, I can also join different things. I can also take different courses with from uh, also from different universities like University of Helsinki and other programming courses. So it is really good thing with Alto that uh, you can also judge yourself, judge your skills that in which skill I can pursue and in which field I can pursue my professional life and my student life. So this thing I, I like very much in Alto and it is the best part. Great, and uh, continuing in that part, um, what made you guys want to study in your field that you are in right now? So, Hasib, you can start. Ah, oh, cool, it's a cool question. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so basic thing, I think uh, study field depends upon your interest and interest is not the only thing, you have to be capable of doing things. Okay, because uh, nowadays I am facing a little difficulties with my courses, but I am interested in these courses, but I am not very, very much capable of doing those things. So the building technology, because uh, my background was from civil engineering, okay, and especially in structures. So building technology gave me the lead to pursue structures, okay, and also with other things, uh, like uh, in, in my country, there is a specific different course and different styles of uh, construction and uh, different technology with design things. But here, there are little bit different things like Euro course and uh, totally different from American course. So this thing made me interesting, made me interested to do that part and also to learn a lot of uh, different things according to building design, according to my field and uh, maybe Someday I will be very good in my field. So this thing led me to the, my field. I can say that I chose this study as a building technology. 
Okay, Wana, you can go ahead. The same question. Uh, I, I can also identify with some things that Hasib said already. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, I, I took the decision to study like civil engineering quite early on when I finished school. So back then I wasn't quite sure uh, what it would be about a few years later. Uh, but um, I think the main reasons was I was interested in maths and physics and stuff like that. And, um, and so I like that it has lots of application of science, but uh, it doesn't stay there. That it's a very practical field and you can um, uh, put your knowledge into practice. And uh, I also uh, find important I think that you can find solution into real problems and you can see like um, the result of what you make, like it's, it's very practical and uh, uh, you can materialize your ideas into structures, buildings or whatever that is. Um, and it gives you like different possibilities to what you want to do. So you can, um, like specialize in a specific area which would give you different options in the future like it could be the structural part itself or uh, like environmental part uh, or management so it it opens you different areas that might interest you and you might not have thought before that this could be it your path but after starting studying it it could actually be it so with me it just happens uh, with time that i get to be interested more and more than just getting uh, at first yeah great uh great before i go forward i want to remind the people who just joined us uh that uh, if you have any question uh you can send uh, you can put it in the chat box and uh, it will be answered in a Q&A session. If you have any questions about uh, how was it like to study in Alto, any questions in general for the panelists, you can just leave it in a chat and we will answer it later. Uh, for now, guys, I wanna ask you, uh, what are your studies like? Uh, in details, I wanna know more, uh, what kind of courses is, is there? Uh, do you participate in any seminars or group work or, or exercises? Uh, how flexible are you with your studies? Uh, how much can you affect the courses you take and uh, is there a mentor uh, mentor attendance or something like like how is it what is your courses are like in general um iona you can go ahead first um well this uh period uh i i am taking two courses one is uh themes and frames of structures which is the pure structural course and another one is about precast and pre-stressed uh, concrete structures. Yes. Okay, these names may be sound too technical, and uh, I acknowledge that not everyone is interested in this specific field. It's in general about engineering. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, in the first year, uh, there was, um, I, I took quite a few courses that uh, involved uh, group work. I think almost in every course there was um, 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 a group work that we had to make. Usually it was uh, um, an essay and a presentation uh, that would make uh, in the end of, by the end of the course. Uh, so different teams would present their own work and that, that way you could also learn a bit about uh, the other teams. Uh, for example, in one course about concrete technology, we presented uh, uh, different uh, concreting techniques. Um, yeah, but <laughs> don't go into detail. Um, but I would say in auto in general, there's a lot of group work in courses. Uh, so there is lots of need to cooperate with other students Last year we, we did it uh, mostly remotely, but otherwise I think it is possible also to meet on campus and go to these um, uh, group rooms to complete this work. Uh, there are also uh, laboratory sessions um, in uh, some of the courses. 
So it's again sometimes they were cancelled. Uh, but for example, last year we took a tour, not a tour, like a demonstration in the lab uh, of our department, and uh, these pictures are from there. So the students can also get uh, familiar with the lab work, and you can also do some lab work in your uh, some of the courses or um, in the thesis work. Um, we had like six mandatory courses and the others we could uh, choose more freely. But there are some guidelines that can help you what to choose, uh, but you can uh, like also choose quite freely. And uh, there are some of the credits that you can choose from uh, whichever school in Alto you want, or even from other universities in Finland. Um, for example, these credits, I, I took some languages courses myself. That is interesting. What about you, Hasib? Okay, so if we talk about this period currently, currently I'm taking three courses. Those are pretty technical. Maybe some guys won't know about that. Uh, I am taking the mechanics of beams and structure. This course was a compulsory structure, uh, compulsory subject which uh, I had to take in the first year, but I couldn't. So other is uh, pre-stress and pre-cast as I don't know. And the other one is uh, the third one is my composite steel structures, like uh, um, the structures which are made by different uh, material, having steel and concrete with a combination of these two materials, how we can develop the structure, how we can make construction or something else, okay. So in previous year, uh, I took uh, management courses, two management courses. Those were quite good because in those courses I faced, uh, I did experience of group work, which was very good because uh, I got, uh, I learned a lot from different people, from different minds. Okay. And as a group work, I think uh, we did quite good. And uh, in, uh, there were two other subjects like uh, where we have to, do some exercises like but those exercises are field based exercises where you can get exposure of the industry in the finland or uh, in country that how it's going in the industry how it's the like a difference between your studies and the industry you can get also experience, uh, experience from those things so it was quite nice and other thing that uh, like i am told that six subjects are compulsory for building technology the like you have to familiar with the some basic concepts that how civil engineering works, how civil engineering is done. Okay, and other courses are up to you. You can choose according to your taste, according to your interest, and also you can switch your field totally. As one of my friends switched his field uh, to from civil engineering to the machine learning, it's a quite difference. Okay, so, and uh, other good thing is like uh, in whichever program you are, gonna be admitted you can choose your study advisors okay those study advisors can help you to choose the subjects to pursue the study according to your own interest and also you can tell them about your weaknesses about your good things and they will also have a mentorship program also happening although it's very very good program okay and you can talk themselves or you can talk to them and you can realize a lot of things about those and also the practical life, how it's going. So the basic thing is that uh, this is a study type, okay? So in every field you want to go, you can choose your subjects according to your interest, which in align to, to your interest. And also for thesis work, if you are going to pursue in, like you are approaching a professor for thesis. According to thesis topic, you also have to choose some subjects which will help you in the thesis work. And if you are really unaware of uh, those topics, like if I'm going to thesis with the, some fire simulation, okay, fire safety in the buildings. So because I didn't take any fire courses, so my professor said that you have to take two to three courses to get knowledge of the fire that how it, like uh, affects the building and the other environment. So yes, this is a quite stuff about the studies, like our studies, which are like, so you can yeah. get idea. Yeah, from these. it's great how flexible the studies are. And we can all agree on that. 
And um, for the next question, uh, I want to ask you if there is uh, any multidisciplinary opportunities uh, in your studies, uh, which and uh, does it play a part in your studies as well? And yeah, Hasib, you can go first. Okay. Yes, there are a lot of multidisciplinary opportunities in studies as you can uh, get uh, RA ship as a research assistantship in lab work and also you can uh, assist some teachers in subjects okay so i think uh, i cannot tell you about uh, this question a lot of things maybe you and i can do that because uh, i didn't get any experience of these things i mean are there any uh, opportunities to in interdisciplinary courses in your studies Mm, yes, according to that, uh, there are a lot of things like as I told earlier, uh, you can uh, get different subjects, different courses and uh, different opportunities like uh, as a volunteer work, you can join different associations to get experience of good things and uh, also different uh, courses uh, offered by Alta University in respect of your minors and majors are your study field you can get those subjects also to get different interests but to get the different knowledge great what about you eva yeah i'd like to add also that uh, um some of the subject also uh, have uh, this uh, multidisciplinary approach uh, such as uh, the management courses for example have uh, uh, some um, some parts that have to do with economics um, or uh, uh, there, there can be, uh, for example, a course that was related to strategic management uh, had also some information about uh, entrepreneurship and uh, startups. Um, and um, another example I can think of is uh, uh, building physics or so combining physics and um, engineering. Uh, so these examples of the courses are quite technical, so they are more focused on one field, but even there, there is um, also exposure to other fields, because uh, uh, that is also something you will find in the working life, that you have to cooperate with people from uh, different departments and different backgrounds. So it really helps to have like a broader knowledge and uh, uh, bro broader pers perception. Yes, indeed. this is actually a nice experience. Um, so now I want to talk to you about your courses. How is your courses load like? And uh, you can also mention like, uh, what about the credits that you have to get per year and how many credits per courses? Uh, and also, you can mention what courses are you taking at the moment. Uh, Hasib, you already mentioned your courses. So, Iona, you can start. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I already mentioned. I take the same as Hasib almost. And uh, uh, one course that has to do with research assistant work. Um, I would say that the, the course uh, load is sometimes a bit heavy, uh, but it's manageable. Um, I would say one thing that was challenging for me is that the periods, uh, the study periods are quite short. They're usually um, lasting about two months. So within these two months, there is uh, uh, lectures and also the final exam included. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite um, uh, um, lots of stuff in a short time, but uh, there is like uh, weekly exercises which, which, which help to learn the material better. There is uh, the um, group work in some of the courses. So all these things throughout the period help you to understand um, the material of the course better. Um, yes. Great. Hasib, do you want to add something? 
Yes, I think so because from, as you see the picture. <laughs> okay, the curse lord uh, basically, uh, if I would say honestly, like uh, because I am taking three courses in this period and period period is very short, but don't be afraid. It is a full time job <laughs> like to study in Alto if you take two to three courses, but uh, uh, it's a good idea to get more credits, to accomplish more credits in first year, then you won't feel any pressure in the second year because you have to do thesis where you can other stuff. Okay, so I would recommend that in first year, uh, the newcomers and the freshers should uh, do much effort to accomplish the credits. But uh, like uh, currently, if uh, I talk about the exercise work and the assignments, weekly assignments, uh, mostly, assignments are pending and uh, maybe sometimes I get late, but uh, because professors are lenient, you can excuse them and you can submit it later. It's not a big deal, but uh, these assignments really help you to get to know about the course and also to uh, get uh, good marks, good grades in exams. Okay, so sorry about the grades. Okay, so yes, the course load is very much, but uh, I'm handling it, but also you can handle it. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I think uh, I won't say anymore. Great. Uh, now, uh, I want to talk to you guys. What is your typical day in Alto looks like? So whatever the schedule is, you can start ahead and explain your day. Yeah, this is my schedule. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add that my schedule is usually a bit mixed, so I'm not following it to the point. Uh, but um, that is an example of now that are uh, mostly remote lectures, also this period. Um, so I wake up usually around eight or nine. Uh, we usually have a remote lecture from 10 to 12. Uh, then uh, sometimes I go to Alto uh, during the day. I, I live outside of campus, so it takes a while, uh, usually 25 minutes to get there. Uh, and uh, uh, sometimes half a lunch with some friends. Uh, then I um, can maybe take a walk in the meantime. Uh, sometimes I go to um, uh, study rooms in Alto where I can take the lecture for there. I have seen that it kind of helps me to concentrate and uh, then um, I continue studying from there or if there is some group project to do. This uh, period I don't have any group project but uh, uh, sometimes uh, we study with another classmate together. Um, and yeah, then at home, uh, I try to relax in the evening, maybe uh, listen to music or watch some film or just <laughs> regular stuff and then go to sleep slowly. And so that's Great. from me. <laughs> what about you, Hasib? Yeah, it's my schedule and I think it's uh, not uh, as followable. <laughs> okay, so honestly, uh, wake up time is 9.30, but it's not uh, quite sure. Because uh, I used to wake up according to my next day lecture schedule. And That's very really late wake up. <laughs> yes, 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 you're right. Okay, and uh, from mostly lectures start from 10 to 12 remote lectures. Okay, and uh, so after taking lecture, or uh, sometimes I don't do breakfast, laziness. And uh, after, if I don't do breakfast, then after lunch at, uh, sorry, after taking remote lunch lecture, then I go to lunch. And for lunch, you can find good restaurants in Alto University, like Tafa is my favorite one. And uh, if you, because on Tafa, you can find both options, vegan and vegetarian and the other stuff okay from chicken and everything yeah. and uh, other one is toas toas is also my favorite but it's quite far from my home from my room so i don't usually go there so tafa is my favorite choice because it's near and also on wednesdays the spaghetti is quite quite delicious okay so it is the lunch thing <laughs> after <laughs> being free from lunch uh, some virtual meetings 
Okay, and some sometime there there used to be lecture or some meeting with squad and uh, with meeting with other people. And also I am doing a lot of volunteer work with the two to three associations here as ESN Alto and Best Helsinki. So sometimes I go with them. Okay, I do some stuff with them. And uh, then after four uh, group work, uh, mostly because uh, in Rome, I don't feel any motivation. So I used to book study space and go there, mostly in like a learning center or undergraduate center. That's really quite, uh, quite and a good space to study and you feel motivation and you feel working mode. Okay, then after I think eight uh, group work, uh, maybe I think sometimes it goes longer after eight, then after eight, I used to dinner at my room. Sometimes I cook dinner, sometimes I don't like cooking because it takes too much time. So three food, like a prepared food is a good thing as I used to bought uh, some pizzas from Lidl or from Aleppo, which is quite near. So these things help me to <laughs> get my dinner. Then after dinner, it's a free time. I used to watch a movie or read some articles and some columns, then hardly go to sleep at 12. And maybe I think I used to sleep at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. It happens. So it was my schedule. So, yeah, you, nice. can, you can realize my laziness from my schedule. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no problem. It's actually a very tight schedule, you guys, both of you. It's really cool. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so now we, we will go to this section of, of questions. We'll talk more about the campus. Uh, so the campus, as you guys know, is in Otanimi, which is uh, surrounded by nature and it's only 10 minute metro ride from Helsinki city center. So uh, for you guys, what, I want to ask about your perspective about what is the campus is like, how did you, when you arrived to, to the campus, how did, you, how did you find it? What is your first impressions and uh, what do you like about the campus? So the first thing about campus that uh, yeah, like uh, the campus tech curricula is a separate village and you feel like it's a, it, you feel university premises here, okay? You walk around, you feel that I am, you feel like student and you go to university uh, and everywhere you feel students, you meet new people, you meet and you see different faces, okay? So that's a quite good thing about Alta University. As if you visit some other university like University of Helsinki, you don't feel any university there. Those are only buildings and where is the city, where is the university, you don't feel. But in Alto, when you enter Alto, it's Alto, totally Alto, okay? Like uh, residential society, residential society, I am living in a quite good place because it's near to the sea. And uh, I often visit sea and uh, I used to sit there around shore and it's quite nice place to get relaxed. And uh, yes, the the most uh, beautiful thing, well, the beautiful thing about campus is that you feel university life here and you feel student life here. And maybe you won't feel in any other university in Finland, but Alco is specific in this type, of, in, in this regard. Yeah, I think so. And uh, there are favorite places here in Alto, like uh, as I, told you about restaurants. And also uh, for uh, free time, there is a smoky. Smoky is a good place for barbecue and to hang out with friends. And uh, in summer to take dinner with sunset, it's a good idea to there on the rooftop of smoky. And uh, there are quite other places like uh, Othaniami Tip. It's a very good place for barbecue. Maybe like uh, the guys don't know these places, but when they come here, they will know about these things. Okay, Othanimity is a good place for barbecue to spend uh, night there, I think so. <laughs> in barbecuing in hangouts with friends and making some fun. And, uh, but other places are closed, like Marantalo was a good option to study, to spend good time with friends and to feel really quite there, relaxed there. Okay, so yes, this stuff, I think that uh, Alto has best things with that. Cool. cool. What about you, Anna? Yeah, I also think the same. I like uh, 
that it has many spaces when, where you can hang out with friends outdoors. That's really nice. Um, like my first impression was that it is very green, uh, like uh, it has so much nature around and it's close to the sea, so it makes it like a really nice location. So as you can see. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that can also make you feel relaxed because if you like feel a little bit stress of your studies, then you can take a walk and like it goes away. Um, and uh, it's a very big campus compared to other universities, I would say, at least to my point of view. Uh, it has also the student housing nearby where Hasi lives. Um, and um, also it has a variety of restaurants to choose from. Now this year, most of them are open. So it's really nice because you can choose a restaurant to go with friends and it's, uh, it has um, <coughs> sorry, a uh, good price for students. Um, and also it has so many people to hang around with. Like last year, it was very quiet around the campus, but uh, this year it's getting more lively and even crowded sometimes. So you get like really nice feeling from other students to be around. I think I would like to add something about that. Like, uh, there are also good places to walk around. Like, uh, whenever you feel tired or stressed, you go out. And uh, I would recommend that go to Birdwash Tower. That's a quite good place. Uh, there is a so calm, quiet, and you see birds, nature there. And uh, yeah, other things that, uh, yes, about the student stuff, like, you can get student benefits uh, uh, on a lot of things. Uh, there is a frank app as everybody knows that so using that app you can get discounts and also like on restaurants also restaurants there is a student discount is active so you can take lunch dinner only with 2.7 euros that's really really cheap and yeah we'll talk about that but yeah we'll talk later but actually this is was really nice recommendations you guys like i i will take that myself <laughs> <laughs> that was really amazing uh, and like for for those of you who are not here yet uh, there is also a virtual campus tour that you can watch and get an idea of how it is like yeah i i, I totally recommend that that you should you should definitely do that if, if you come into alto that is is that so you know what kind of facilities there are and how can you benefit your time to the maximum uh so for now, we're talking about the, we will talk about housing and student benefits. So uh, first of all, I ask you guys, what kind of housing options uh, are, the, are there for students? And for you, also, you can talk about your housing, what kind of, what kind of housing you guys are taking. So well, maybe I can begin since the yeah. picture is from housing where I, I live. Mm -hmm. um, I live in like shared accommodation, so we shared one uh, two-story house with another three students. Um, and uh, there are also more options, like you can have your own apartment or family apartment if you have family uh, or other shared accommodation with uh, like uh, there are houses with uh, uh, two rooms or more. Um, so I live a little bit further than the campus in uh, north from Lepavara, if you're familiar with Helsinki area, uh, but it's like 25 minutes uh, with the bus from Alto. Um, this is Hoas yeah. apartment, right? Hoas. Well, this is, uh, yeah, Hoas. it's a uh, Hoas apartment. It's, uh, uh, it's a housing um, it's a housing for Helsinki, for Helsinki students. So you can like make an application to this uh, quite a few months, I would say, before starting the studies in Alto. Uh, so there are two organizations. There is HOS, which is for all universities of Helsinki, and AYY, which is Student Union for, student union for Alto students. And um, I would recommend to make application to both of them. 
so that you are almost sure that you will get an apartment out of them. And uh, if you are flexible and uh, would, would, wouldn't mind a shared accommodation, I think it's almost like uh, sure that you will get a place. Um, and then um, shared accommodation that I did, for example, it's it's uh, it's more affordable and you can also uh, meet some new people by that. Great. And this because is, if uh, you can say so your familiar. experience. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I'm so familiar with this picture because I think I live there. I live in the same place. Is that Miss and Ritty? Too? Yes, exactly. I think I can see from your window. I wanted to ask yeah. before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I live. I currently live there. Yeah, it's nice. Very quiet and nice place. Oh. <laughs> what about you, Hasib? Okay, so I think there are two student organizations here who who offer you student hostels like AYY and uh, WAS. Uh, with AYY, when you apply for AYY, you, I think you are in a long queue because for AYY apartments, uh, people are tend to be there and also people apply for too quick there. And with HOAS, I think HOAS is very lenient. And uh, I got my apartment only with one call. I didn't send an application and nothing, but I just called them that I am roomless. I have to live somewhere. So they said that, okay, in one building, we have empty room, you can go there. So that's why, that's how I got my room. Okay, so it's really easy, but uh, rooms are quite good and you feel that, uh, but quite big enough that uh, for your living, for some stuff, and also to set some things according to your taste, that according to your interior. And uh, yes, like uh, I am living in like Yamaran Taiwal, which is the, I think, last part of Othaniami campus near to the sea. So it's a quite good place. And uh, so yes, this picture is from Jamin and Table 11, GMT 11, it's a quite good place. And here you can enjoy a lot of things that these buildings have club rooms, saunas, and uh, some other stuff, for kayaks. You can uh, like, uh, you can borrow these things. You can borrow some games, card games from club rooms. And also you can do some activities as kayaks uh, and uh, other so skateboarding. You can borrow these things from Otahuas. There is a, there is a so, uh, like, uh, association who owns these things who owns club rooms and with ayy and hoas there are different associations with ayy you you can get uh, different type of benefits and with hoas you can get different type of benefits but those are quite good like student benefits so yeah but uh, apartment types are uh, different and uh, you can also have uh, two room apartments three room apartments okay three room apartments are quite uh, wide and good and have I think two washrooms which is good thing okay so yeah these things are uh, quite complex but not complex but uh, you can be familiar with those things when you will be here and uh, yes these are housing societies and you can apply for those and for AYY you can go to the domo.fi you can set their application and also you can I think put some urgency points there in this way you can you, you, you your application would be prioritized Okay, so these things I have to tell about the housing societies. Okay, so uh, now we talk about uh, what kind of student benefits are there. Hasib, you mentioned before, Frank App. Yes, you it's more about that. Yes, should I start? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, there are a lot of student benefits here. Like using Frank App, you have to just to show the fan cap and your student status to everywhere like uh, there are a lot of activities as uh, you go to swimming pool you just show them the student id your student id you get discount there okay if there is a ticket of 10 euros you can get five euros and also uh, frank usually uh, offer some discounts on different things like uh, adidas on some cinema tickets you can get benefits from those also and the uh, best benefit is the restaurant stuff which is really quite good and also you can uh, get with Frank and also you can get HSL card for per month uh, with half of that price. I think half of the actual price. If you show them your student ID or student card, they, they will give you, if it costs 60 or 70 euro, you will just cost uh, 35 or 30 euros. Okay. And uh, by using your HSL card, 
you can enter in lot of buildings, lot of apartments here. Sorry, not apartments, sorry, but departments and study spaces by using your HSL card. You just need to activate the HSL card with, I think, uh, all the spaces or study spaces. Then it will be lined and then you can enter that building just uh, uh, showing the card to the detector somewhere. Okay, these things are quite good here uh, digitally. And uh, yes, you can get student discounts, benefits everywhere using your Frank app and also HSL card. I think I don't have any other thing to say about that. Maybe Ayana have, she can continue. Yeah, I also want to add that in order to get the discount in HSL for the transportation, you have to be registered as a permanent resident in Helsinki okay. area. So I think if you are from outside the EU, it's, it's registered when you, uh, when you registered here in Finland, but if you are from EU, you have to do a separate registration. So it's good to do these things early on because I was late. Uh, um, it, so it helps you. Then you can also get discounts for uh, VR trains, which are all around Finland. So if you want to travel in another city in Finland, you, you can still get quite a good price for it. Uh, but like everyone here, I, I agree that the best thing is the student launches. That's the best benefit. And also you can get access to student health care by FSHS. So like um, for uh, physical health, uh, um, dental, dental health or, or mental health services. Great. That was really some nice recommendations. Um, okay, now we, this section, we will talk about the career opportunities. So uh, for the first question is, uh, is it possible to combine studies with work? Uh, I, wanna, I wanna know what do you guys think about that? Ayona, you can start. I think it is quite challenging, maybe especially in the first year. Uh, both to find work and combine it because of the study load sometimes, but of course it, this is like an uh, in, independent thing and some people can really manage. I know some of my, for, from other students that some of the people also work full time, uh, but I would say like part time is maybe more realistic. Uh, myself, I do this period uh, work as a course assistant in one course. Um, so basically, it's uh, work that involves like correcting exercises uh, from other students and um, yeah, giving answer to questions that students have. So. Um, I have had a good experience uh, with this kind of work and uh, it gives you good guidance. Uh, the teacher gives you good guidance so you don't feel like you're lost and you, but you have to teach your, the course yourself because we have limited experience. Uh, but you can definitely gain experience uh, through that. Also, if you're interested in teaching yourself um, you can also get like uh, opportunities for research assistance through the university or also out of squad, which we are part of, me in um, or other things outside the university, of course. Um, like, yeah, maybe Hasib can continue. Yeah. Okay, yes, I think it is quite possible to combine studies with work uh, because uh, I think as Aaron mentioned, uh, you, you can find research assistantships and also you can get paid thesis here. This is a quite good thing with Alto. Maybe you can also do internship with some companies as a part-time job and also you can run your studies with that. But uh, in my case, I don't have nothing about that and like internship or something due to some reasons uh, and uh, yes, but I'm doing an art job with uh, to run as expenditures, but it's quite easy. It's not uh, too tough to be manage your expenditures and everything. 
it's not too too big it's not a big deal you can uh, pursue your studies you can earn your studies according to that okay so yes and also in alto there are a lot of opportunities as alto score okay you can get uh, some money for your living and about your rent something and uh, other thing is uh, like you also have to get some uh, part-time jobs in alto university as a booking places and uh, also there are a lot of restaurants you can do work with them as a shift base okay but it's quite easy and it's quite uh, easy to live here okay not quite difficult and you don't you you won't feel any stress as i'm not feeling any stress here because I, as i also have, don't have job or something like that but i don't feel, feel any uh, economical stress that's a good thing but because when you feel economical stress you cannot focus on other things so yeah, yeah. you can easily live here I like that advice. This is really cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I want to ask you what kind of career opportunities are there for your uh, for your studies or for if you think for engineering school in general? What do you think about that for people who wants to join engineering this master's degree? Hmm. So, uh, Hasi, you can go first. Okay. Yes. Uh... So I just want to remind you, you can talk about, uh, of course, you can talk about your special uh, speciality as a civil engineering and also as a master of engineering in general. Okay, got it. If I talk about my specialty and about my minors, so there are like uh, Finland is very prosperous in those jobs as there are big companies here like Rembol, Afri, Sveco, Neste. They offer a lot of international like uh, international people and also they recruit them and uh, yes you can work with them with because uh, they are doing good efforts putting good efforts in industry in structures especially and uh, as i'm taking one course with precast precast is precast has a good scope nowadays here because it doesn't take too much time to be constructed to construct a building it just uh, like you have to make the stuff before that pre-made stuff, you just have to put the stuff on the site and just you have to organize that to build a structure. So it's a quite easy thing. But uh, if I will talk about the career opportunities, so it's a lot of stuff, but uh, you have to be good in some skills and uh, you have to knowledge of that stuff. It doesn't matter that you have that good grades in your on your transcript, but uh, those subjects which uh, contain that uh, practicalities or contain that uh, study material about the field, about industry, and uh, then you can get easily jobs and also referral, you can get some referrals with uh, your seniors, your students. Okay, those things also help you to be in an industry to start your uh, career here. And it's really not uh, i think not tough i won't say that it's tough but it, it's not tough but uh, it's quite demanding as uh, it uh, yeah i think i don't have any other thing to say with that but uh, there are a lot of opportunities here uh, as a master student uh, if you are coming uh, in finland uh, in different degrees like a computer science or marketing or business then there are a lot of opportunities here because uh, uh, as i met different students here who were from uh, computer science related field like uh, it or machine learning they get jobs very easily here because finland is uh, doing good work in digitalization and some other stuff so that's why because finland has good scope in Maybe because uh, as I heard from my seniors, because there are two to three fields which are on boom nowadays. First is structures in which we are pursuing and uh, other is uh, on top, I would say that uh, computer science and IT because every guy can job can get job easily. And most of guys like uh, from their own countries, they do job here. They can do thesis with Alta University with some different industries according to their interest, according to their like uh, study type. Okay. And uh, the other thing I think is business stuff that uh, three fields are really, really quite uh, 
I, I are quite uh, prosperous in, in career opportunities. Yes, I think so. It's just my mind, but I said, I don't know about others stuff. Yeah. Yes, Iona can maybe pursue in these things. Yeah. You that. For more about that, I want to hear what is what did Iona think about that? What is your perspective about it? Uh, yeah, I think there are career opportunities here, and especially like for master students, they can maybe find an internship and maybe continue from there. I have heard other people doing the same. Uh, but uh, I would say that uh, in this field uh, of uh, engineering, like mechanical or civil or built environment, uh, there is uh, a little more limitation compared to computer science that sometimes the Finnish language is required. Uh, so that can maybe limit your options a bit, but uh, there are still uh, international companies, as uh, has mentioned, quite a few. Uh, so they're usually the working language is English, but it can vary uh, which kind of opportunities are available. Uh, usually uh, it can be demand as designer or as a site inspector or some other role like manager, maybe later on. Um, but yeah, um, and also in the university, if you want to uh, continue with uh, PhD studies, uh, there, is, there is also opportunities for doctoral studies later on. Okay. Now maybe we're a bit running out of time. That's what, yes. And, uh, but for now, I wanna ask you guys uh, more questions about student life. So uh, what is the student life is like for you guys? So yeah, Yona, you can go ahead and start. Well, like last year was a bit of limited student life because of the pandemic situation, but uh, uh, this year in, in the summer, things are opening up. So like you can see in the picture, we sometimes have picnics in the summer or barbecues, like Hasib said, there are like many nice spots around where you can like have uh, barbecues or like small parties or something. And also during the starting week, uh, there are many events around the campus. Uh, usually as um, a first year student, you get to participate. Uh, but we missed last year, so we took this year part in some events. So there is like many opportunities to uh, do different hobbies, different activities, uh, meet other people and just hang around. And it's, it's really good, I would say. Okay. Um, has he briefly, do you have any comments on that? Yes, I think so. Student life is fun and cheering here. And uh, I think now we are going to be a normal, like we're getting normal days. So there would be a lot of events coming up. And you guys think that uh, you cannot attend all of those, but so things are coming up. So, yes, I think so. Student life is very fun and cheering. Yes, indeed. I can totally agree with that. Um, so uh, what, what do you guys do in your free time? Uh, I see this nice picture next to the lake. Hasib, is that, is that your picture? Uh, no, I think I didn't add my, this picture, but <laughs> it's a quite a good picture. <laughs> yeah, in free time, you can do different things. And uh, especially, I used to go out and hang out with friends in free time because I think uh, I cannot stay in my room anymore. I don't like to be stay in room as a room arrested. So, and uh, seldomly, I used to watch movie on free time otherwise. I used to hang out with friends and do some volunteer work with other some things. Great. What about you, Yana? I also do the same. Usually hang out with friends uh, or take a walk or do some sport. I like to go swimming, usually to a swimming pool uh, or do a cycle. Amazing. Uh, okay, so now this set of questions is about also community. Uh, the first question is, how were you welcomed to the community when you arrived? Iona, you can start. You well, it was uh, very uh, restricted at that time. I had to stay in quarantine for two weeks. So I missed the starting week and the events at that time. Uh, but uh, I followed some of the events online. 
Uh, and then uh, we have uh, the student tutors who can help you with some practical issues, like they can answer to you some questions that you have about the uh, student life and how to arrange your first things when you come to Finland, for example. They can help you to take the key from the place so that you don't have to go immediately when you arrive and you can just get the key and get to your to your room. Um, but uh, other years it's much more fun because uh, uh, every uh, every uh, study uh, every department has. Uh, their own guild, uh, which uh, organize uh, different uh, hangouts and activities. Uh, so it's usually very fun, especially in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, Hasip, what do you think about that? Uh, yes, I think so, because when I came here in Finland, everything was gone. And uh, I just attended some things, but it was quite good. Like uh, there are different guilds here, like communities. As we we belong to a kick guild, Koninsi Nori Kilta, it's a guild of mechanical engineering. Okay. And uh, in guild, you can do a lot of things. And also they are like, uh, they guide you with different things, uh, your overall, some thick curry caps. Okay. So, but uh, I attended an event, I think me and Ayana both, the Vapu event, event X, that was quite good. And we were warmly welcomed into that. And that time we got, uh, into that our guild. So it was my first time there. So now I think things are quite easy and uh, yes, everybody should be warmly welcomed. Would be, yes. Amazing. Yes. And uh, so I also have this pink overalls as in the pictures. Okay. Yeah, I really like that. It's it's one of the most special things about the, the community in Alco. Yes, and also I think you can attach some patches with your experience here. If your overall is full of patches and something that you you, you will be recognized as an experienced person here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I will take these two questions together because of the time. So first, the first question is, what is it like to be an international student at Alto? And is it possible to survive without knowing Finnish? So yeah, Hasi, you can start if you want. Uh, I think uh, uh, as an international, it's uh, really easy to be here. Sometimes you feel that uh, linguistic barrier, but it's not uh, too much difficult because everybody knows English is a secondary language in mostly Helsinki and also in Helsinki area. I think uh, everybody knows English. You can communicate easily with others. And uh, as an international, you, if you are living in university, you won't uh, feel any difficulty with linguistic things. Oh, it's really easy to be here. Yeah, I think Finnish, uh, I don't know about Finnish because I didn't take the course. If you take course, then you can get to, to know some, you can get some familiarity with Finnish language. It would be easy. Okay. Yeah, yeah it is possible to live without Finnish here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I think the same that it's uh, like most people speak English, especially in the Helsinki region. Um, I have tried myself to learn some Finnish, but it's, and have taken two courses here in Alto, which was uh, very good, uh, but still my Finnish is not very good. So um, yes, <laughs> but you can uh, you can manage with English definitely. But if you're interested, uh, then there are also opportunities to learn the language to some extent, at least uh, even if you're staying a uh, little time here. Um, and uh, personally, I felt quite comfortable living here, even from the start, like it felt quite at home because it's like peaceful and it just felt quite familiar. Yeah, uh, I'm afraid this 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 picture and this slide would uh, scare people from learning Finnish. But, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but don't be too scared. Maybe be scared, but not too scared. <laughs> Get ready, but take it easy. So yes. I think this is the end of our uh, uh, webinar. We'll go to the Q&A session. So, uh, so yeah, for the Q&A session, we have a question right here. Uh, two questions, actually, uh, from uh, Hajim. Hajim. Um, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, <laughs> the first question is, how easy or difficult to find a place or internship for foreign students who don't speak Finnish. Um, so anyone can answer that. If you guys mm -hmm. 
you guys ready to answer? Anyone ready wants to answer that question? Uh, yes, I think I can give that answer. That uh, it's not uh, as easy as uh, people think in the sitting in that country. Okay, but uh, sometimes if you're lucky enough, you can get internship easily. But it also depends upon your field, your interest, and also your some skills. That if you have basic skills for that job or for that internship, Okay, and uh, the most important thing in Finland is a referral. If you have a good referral or some friend in that company, then it would be easy to be there, okay, to get an internship. And the other question is, what kind of companies are typical among your school friends? I think uh, uh, in, in uh, my field, in building technology, basically, my all seniors are working with the Afri, Rambo, and Swako. These three companies are very famous and common here who recruit uh, many, many more international people, okay, without uh, any care of Finnish or something else. But if you know, if you have some basic Finnish skills, oh, sorry, Finnish uh, language level, then uh, you can get easily job here. It's really quite easy. Great, uh, Iona. Yeah, I also typed some of the names that Hasip uh, told and uh, I have also found these companies that they offer some also English speaking internships, but uh, I would say it's more challenging for uh, international people who don't speak Finnish. Uh, but of course, maybe last year was uh, more difficult because of the pandemic also. And like, you know, it's uh, it was a bit worse employment wise. Um, but uh, you can also do some things like improve your CV and uh, uh, like cover letter because it's uh, it's used to all job applications in Finland and there are usually like uh, webinars or uh, coaching sessions in auto also where you can um, uh, like uh, get ideas about how to write uh, CV and cover letter and uh, adapt it to what the employers here in Finland are looking for. Great. Uh, thank you guys for answering that. I think that was really to the point. Um, I believe we don't have any other questions unless um, unless someone else wants to add any question while we have time for Q&A. Um, but if we don't have uh, if we don't have any other questions, we can end it up here. So thank you guys for joining us. It was really great, great to have you guys. Uh, I want to thank the panelists. I want to thank the attendees um, for what's next. Uh, so now that you guys have seen that webinar, if you have any questions regarding applying to Alto University regarding admissions, you can join the webinar on Friday, or you can send an email to admissions at alto.fi. Uh, if you have any questions, any other questions about studying in Alto in general, feel free to join Alto Squad. It's uh, Alto Squad is a student ambassador ambassadors group of students from different uh, backgrounds, from different studies. Uh, it's really great and friendly. You can chat with the members. Uh, you can join uh, the Squad for Friday on a coffee session. You'll find that on the website. Uh, go to alto.fi slash studies for more information, for more links about that. Thank you guys for joining and I'll see you on campus in 2022. Goodbye.